AI has accelerated from zero to a thousand in the past year, regardless of your opinion on its relevance. It's here, it's being adopted by businesses, and it's not going anywhere. Does this mean then that your job as a developer is on the way out? No, it doesn't. And in fact, all of those types of questions were answered in my last video. I'll put a link above to that. But in this video specifically, I wanna talk about how to stay relevant as a developer in the coming years. Times have changed a little, and with that comes the need for us to adapt a little. And while learning a technology like HTML was valuable five years ago, it's not so valuable anymore. You have to go deeper and you have to also polish up the skills that keep you a marketable human. So here are three developer skills that you must have for this AI age. Number one, the fundamentals. Years ago when I got started, you could land a developer job without really understanding any fundamentals. If you could code a web page, you could find your way into an interview somewhere. No need to know anything about memory or network fundamentals or DSA or any of that up front. You'd have to learn it later, but you didn't need to know it up front to get into the interview. You know JavaScript? You can update my website? You're hired. Sounds fishy, right? All you purists, you true engineers out there, it makes you mad. How dare they let these untrained, unaccredited imposters into my lucrative field? Well, they did. And here we are years later, pretty good devs, cloud admins, IT professionals, whatever you want to call us. Just not engineers, right? As if we ever use that term anyway. But with all of the layoffs and the economy downturn, we have a lot of devs on the market with way more skills than you or I have. That's just the breaks. What are you going to do about it? Complain? fuss about it on Twitter. There's actually a tweet going around where this lady says that her company is now no longer hiring self-taught devs due to the sheer number of applications they are getting from that crew of outlaws. My answer is, who cares? You will shoot yourself in the foot as a company with this one. Probably 50% of devs that I've worked with in the past were self-taught and they weren't new, meaning there will always be self-taught devs in the industry. But the initial acceptance of self-taught devs seems to be not so much an acceptance anymore. It's harder now, there's a bigger pool. But with hard work, it's completely doable. Just gotta put in the hard work and you gotta want it. And by the way, by self-taught, I mean no degree. As many have commented in my past YouTube videos, everybody's self-taught, I get that, but I'm using it in the term of having no degree. And now AI is being incorporated into all of these businesses. All of these businesses are on this race to pull in AI to save them money and make them more productive and to feed them more results from all this data. And in turn, it's causing consolidations as the human resource manager would call it. So while you may be good at your job now, if you do get laid off, you'll need to re-enter that workforce that pool of devs, a much more capable developer. And to do this, you don't need to go and do 50 more follow along projects or continue to jump around in the sea of JavaScript frameworks or get caught in all these particulars and trending lingo that everybody tells you you need to learn. You instead need to now more than ever revisit those fundamentals that you never learned in the first place. This rise in AI is demanding developers who know what's going on under the hood. Developers who can solve problems regardless of the technology, who can understand the vocabulary of the industry. Developers who can adapt to this new technology, which is just really old technology under the hood, but much more faster and innovative. And while you do not need a CS degree, these CS concepts are very much needed now, like DSA or computational thinking, as we move into providing solutions to these AI problems. In addition, you'll need to be sure you understand the concepts of programming. AI helpers like ChatGPT, or Copilot or Claude or whatever Terminator you choose to use, they will give you code when you ask for it. You, on the other hand, need to know what to do with it. You need to know if it's good code or bad code, how it can fit into the project you're working on, or better yet, where to trash it at. In this case, language specifically matters less than the fundamentals that underlie the language. But what outcome do you need to reach to solve your problem? We need to be good at that more than we do, hey, I'm good at JavaScript, call me when you need a modal. So here's some advice. Go and pick yourself up some books like Grokking Algorithms, which by the way, I'm teaching through weekly in my imposter devs community, which is a place specifically for filling the gaps in your self-taught learning. I'll put a link below. But this is a great book for DSA and CS principles, or a book that one of my past coworkers, Glitchbyte, recommended called Dive Into Systems, A Gentle Introduction to Computer Systems, which is by the way, what all of this AI stuff runs on. Be sure you know it more than you know how to center a div or to float something right, or to make a button wiggle when you hover over it. Another recommendation is a book that I picked up a couple of years ago, but just started reading called The Imposter's Handbook by Rob Connery, not related to Sean, which is a CS primer for self-taught devs. It's true. You don't have to spend $100,000 for this information. And then there's sites like Zero to Mastery that has a coding interview course that will take you through big O, 
data structures, algorithms, and even a bunch of interview questions. They also have a course on system design and architecture, but what I'm getting at is be sure you spend a little time each week learning what's going on underneath all of those abstracted tools that you use daily. This will take you far in the future. All right, number two. But before we get to number two, here's a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Pork Bun. One of the best decisions made at the beginning of my coding journey was to start a website. It's opened up many doors since then, and I recommend it to most devs. And one of the best places for you to grab a domain yourself is over at Pork Bun, a trusted accredited domain name registrar. And Pork Bun is currently offering an incredible deal on website domains and specifically the techdomains.app dot dev or dot foo for only five dollars for the first year these three domain types come with heightened security benefits for you and your users by requiring https encryption to load and fortunately a free let's encrypt ssl cert is included with every pork bun domain name registration and these domains are just great for developers or really anyone in tech to help showcase their portfolio or technical blog posts also free with every domain is who is privacy web and email hosting trials, and you can manage everything about your new tech domain there in one simple user interface. Pork Bun is backed by five-star support, 365 days a year, and actually has more five-star reviews than any other registrar out there. So go and grab you one of these tech domains, .app, .dev, or .foo, at Pork Bun for only $5 for the first year by using my link below. Now back to the video. Number two is soft skills. If you think about the AI advancements that we currently have, it's technical. Of course, we don't trust it. It can't be left alone or depended on completely, but it can do technical things like aggregating data, making predictions, scraping the web and generating solutions based on all of that data, solving problems in seconds. And it doesn't get tired. It doesn't need to sleep or any of that like we do. But what it can't do is be personable. It's all logical, it's not personal. Of course, there are labs out there trying to create feelings. And when a steel eyebrow raises on a robot, we think we've done something, but it's really just, it's just creepy. But this software field, it includes stakeholders and customers, teams and leaders and sales, and it calls for good communication and the dispensing of information between people. AI, it isn't there. We can take its data and we can communicate it to other people or to a whiteboard or to a commercial, things like that. And before you state the obvious, I can hear you already. Yes, soft skills, they've always been important. That's why we should never discredit self-taught devs who come from other non-technical fields, but have great soft skills versus CS grads who have all the technical knowledge, but the personality of Devin himself or itself. If you've been that coder that just does what he or she is told off in the corner and avoids speaking at standups and never gets called on for opinions, your day is over unless you shore up this skill. You must develop your communicative skills, your vocal problem solving in efforts at honing in on these soft skills. Learn social skills, adaptability, get better at collaboration. These are all things that really can't be automated. And I have two recommendations for you here. First, I've said this so much in the past, code out loud, work in AWS out loud, meaning talk out loud as to what you're doing technically while you're doing it. Like, oh, now I'm creating this Lambda function and this Lambda function has a handler that's gonna be triggered. And oh, I need to go create this policy that does such and such and get these words into your vocabulary. When you draw out a plan for your application, talk about it out loud. And then second, read this book, How to Have Confidence and Power in Dealing with People by Les Giblin. This is the How to Win Friends and Influence People book people didn't know about for soft skills. Written in 1956, this book is timeless. I have it on Kindle. I read it a while back. I need to read it again, but there are all kinds of golden nuggets and actionable items in it. So go and read that. And then finally, number three is AI common knowledge and the embracing of where we're at. Some of us are anti AI innovation. And I think this is shooting yourself in the foot. You don't have to like it. You don't have to think it's going to be significant. You may find it boring and something you really don't have any interest in, but you can't just ignore it completely. It's going to be in the business discussions and you're going to be called on to give your take on it. And you need to show that you understand it at least from a surface level. So number three is to get a good surface level understanding of where we're at with AI, some of this foundational technology and other things you may be asked to do as a developer. But there's a problem. Where do you even begin? in this vast field. Do you need to become a math and a statistics whiz to understand this stuff? What sector do you focus on? Is there a way to get just a general understanding of the big picture? Well, you don't have to go deep. Many of us don't want to be in machine learning or data science. And the truth is, it's a hard field to get into. 
as you'll have a lot of ground to make up and the data science world, it doesn't really have any low barriers to entry. You gotta know your stuff. But here's what I would recommend in the vein of staying relevant in this age. And this will be the last resource that I'll recommend. And this is not sponsored. I do not have any affiliate connection with them, but it's a site that I've been paying $12 a month for for like a year now, and I'm loving it. And it's the old and trusted Packed Publishing. I've had a membership there for at least a year now, and while some books are garbage, the majority are not. And with this membership, I get access to all books and video courses. So when I need to learn a concept or I need questions answered, I literally just find a book here and search online for the section that I need. So in this regard, I would learn things like this in just maybe 30 minutes a week, maybe an hour a week. Things like this. The difference between the general term AI and its subsets like machine learning, deep learning, things like that. I would also learn about generative AI, what it is, how it works, what is a vector database? Maybe connect to OpenAI, the API, and build something. I have a course in the Imposter Devs community where I build an interview bot with it. You could use that. You could learn a lot from it. We're also going through a book where we're learning about the business side of AI and what's being used today. But I would also get familiar with terms like language models and natural language processing. Again, how they work, not becoming an expert. I would also pay attention on what's actually being used out there today. And to do that, there's a good number of AI newsletters out there that will keep you up to speed on all of the new and relevant information available. But the key here is just to stay relevant by broadening your general knowledge. So you have a programming knowledge, specific programming knowledge, general programming knowledge, whatever, but broadening that into the AI world as it continues to evolve. And with that being said, that's it for me today. What skills do you think are needed in the coming years? Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video.